Okay, so new Cubase tutorial in a new year. I am doing this on Cubase 10.5, but nothing that I show you here should make any difference if you're still working on 10, and the latest version that is out is 11, and I do believe most of this will be the same there too. So you've learned about the basics of setting up a surround project, how to do panning, how to do effects, how to work with a control room. So now let us look at how to export stuff. Now you've looked at export before, just in Cubase, in stereo, but I want to have a, a bit more of an advanced export video here for the sake of surround sound, but also let's combine that and go through the process of setting up a slightly more involved template than what you would have seen before. So as templates go, make them your own. Do what makes sense to you and your project. Don't just blindly follow the steps that I'm going to do here. And this is also very generic. I would tailor it a lot according to the project I'm working on. But this is going to be a very rough setup in terms of surround sound stems. And I'm going to use the process of using a submaster uh, group track that allows for quick switching between stereo and surround export. Now, this is not the only way you can do this. You can use direct outs, you can use some other features too. But I'll show you this one, which is quite a simple one to understand. So here's my project, stock standard Cubase here, actually a new install, so it doesn't have anything set up yet. Uh, so we'll start from scratch, and you can also see that the control room is disabled. So always start with checking your settings. So in your project setup, this is where you set videos. I'm going to change my display format to time code. I'm happy with my sample rate, not going to add anything else here. If it's a video project, you set that according to your video. Um, and you can see you can also set the time code here on the ruler. That makes sense for the video kind of stuff. Then if you go to studio setup under the studio menu, now this might be cut off slightly in the screen that I'm doing here, but it's studio menu and studio setup. And this is really when you set up your studio, as the name um, implies. Now you'll see under VST audio system, I am now running a metric halo, so this matches nicely what we've got in the studio. And why I'm showing you this is this is always something you go check. If you're in the studio, you check here that it's the MH Link audio. If you're in Michelle, you check that this is the ensemble, unless we've upgraded that to something else. Now, firstly, it needs to show up, but then go to the actual interface because this is where you check two important things. One is your, your, your um, what is it called? It's called your buffer size. And the other thing is this funny other option over here. So your buffer size you set appropriately in terms of that trade-off between latency and in terms of um, how your computer can keep up. If you're not doing live tracking with live monitoring, then you can go for a, a higher buffer size. Now this option to set the device attenuation to zero dB is a, an interesting but also curious thing with Steinberg software. It is on by default and be aware of it because depending on your hardware interface, this may give you quite a fright. So if you are working with an audio interface that has like a physical monitor button, like I used to do this on my Focusrite Liquid 56 and on a Scarlet or something like that, then it's totally fine that this is set to zero because in that case, like with a, with a Sapphire, range. You had a software control, but you also had a physical button. And if you didn't have this go to zero, then the physical, then, then the two kind of get can conflict it. So it works nicely if you put this on. But if you're using an audio interface that has a digital only gain or monitoring setup, like our metric halo, like the ensemble, if you keep this guy ticked, the moment you launch Cubase on your window, it's going to max out the output level on the interface, which can give you a big fright or it can hurt speakers or something like that. So do untick that. You don't have to set it up more than once, but as I said, this is a stock standard install and because I am using a metric halo here, let me see if I can show you. Um, no, it's not showing up on the right screen. Um, untick that. Then, the thing I should actually be getting to is your project settings. So F4, you can also get it from the studio menu audio connections. I've covered this before, but now we're going to do this slightly differently. 
So let's let's delete the stereo input. I don't have any stereo inputs, and I am going to add a bus for a mono mic. Um, and my mic happens to be on analog one, but it's not going to my host. Um, I've just set it up and it's actually coming in on input three, this rifle mic that I've got plugged in. So I've got that set up, probably won't use it, but in case we need to record a quick sample line to, to pan around or to do something like that, I've got that set up. Now the output is the thing that's quite important. You'll see I've got a stereo output configured here and I am going to leave that. But I'm going to add a 5.1 bus. So that's my surround art over there. Now you'll see there's the stereo art and the surround art. Let's not confuse anybody, let's call it 5.1 art, then you know exactly what it is. And you can see it is auto assigned these output numbers. And I'm not going to use that because I want to use the control room. Remember you need these physical or these not physical but these buses to route to them to export audio and yes you can use them to route to your speakers to hear something but the control room is more flexible and has very nice features for surround. So in that case you switch off these um, inputs you can go to not connected and you use the control room. Now it's still possible in Nuendo, but in older versions of Cubase, you could do both at the same time and duplicate your signal. That is something that has since been disabled in the way that Cubase is set up. So have a look, I am enabling my control room and I defaulted to a 5.1 monitor and now you can see it's automatically disabled those first five outputs. Now, be aware, it, things get confusing in terms of order. So I have my stereo out first and then my 5.1 out and you have a 5.1 monitor and I'm adding another monitor. I'm adding, actually I don't have to add another monitor here unless I've got other specific stereo speakers, which I do, but you can just use the control room to fold down to stereo. But this is where you would add more monitors and just have a look, I've got my one 5.1 monitor, it's only monitor A there, 5.1, but if I were to add a stereo monitor, um, over here and add it then you'll see there's A and B that you can A B between stuff. Now that's as I said useful if you've got literally separate monitors but if you just want to use your existing five speakers and use two of them to listen to the stereo fold down version the control room already has that covered with that button. So there's no need to, to route an entire uh, extra output monitor for that. So I'm going to remove this one, just keep my 5.1 monitor, it's patched 1 to 6 correctly, uh, my speakers are on SMPTE order, so this is in SMPTE order, so everything will sound fine. And now with my outputs, I am going to make sure that those two are not connected as well. Now have a look, there's the little speaker next to stereo out, that means that is your main mix. And what we are setting up now is actually a surround project. We keep the stereo because we want to do the stereo fold down and you can already do that for monitoring with your control room but if you want to do that for exporting you need the stereo out so we're leaving that there but I'm right clicking on 5.1 out and I'm setting this as my main mix and you can see aha now my control room has changed. You can see that there's now five speakers visible here on your control room output because I've made this the main mix. Also note, whichever one is set to the main mix here, that's the only one that you can export with this workflow that I'm giving you. It's different for other workflows, but if you have this set to 5.1 out, even though you've got the stereo out bus, even if you root stuff to it in your tracks, if you mix down in Sternberg terminology, there's not going to be any audio there. So be aware of that. Um, I will make a separate video for covering a different workflow. So now we've got all of this set up. You can use this to set up groups. Actually, let me do that for a change. I usually set up groups just as I set up tracks, but let's do it differently for now. So I want to have um, 5.1 groups and I actually want five of them. So let's make it four, let's make it simpler. The five would have been to split ambience and sound effects separately, but let's keep that simple now. So we'll have DX, FX, MX, and the fourth one is my submaster, which I'll show you. And I'm just putting the name G there for group as I did before, and then I'll name them. So you can see there's my four groups here, and group one is gonna be group DX, 
group 2 is going to be group FX. By the way, if you can't seem to be double clicking fast enough in Steinberg on a Mac, make sure you go set your double click speed and if you're using certain types of um, mice then you don't set it under the mice menu, you set it under the accessibility menu, strangely enough. Then I've got my MX and then I've got my 5.1 sub master. So those are those things. And you can see now I can actually set my groups to the submaster. You can do it all from this menu already. So all these groups are going to this submaster and the submaster is going to my 5.1 output. But what would we do without color coding? So here's my groups. Let's make them bigger. They're in a folder. Let's go for my standard that you've seen before and color code these guys. There we go. This guy, don't actually have a color for that. Let's leave it, let's make it red for fun. Um, so there's my group tracks. We'll get back to them. I will, I'm not going to add a lot of things here, but let's add, let's just add a few mono audio tracks. Uh, we might put any, something on them, we might not. Um, so say here's your DX track. Actually, let's just duplicate this guy. Now obviously you'll have lots of tracks and I really like to organize them in folders. Um, so I'll have my DX folder, my M FX folder, my MX folder, and the DX folder will also have subfolders in for, for various um, scenes in a, a live action film. Um, it, it would probably make sense for me to, at the end of the video, maybe just open a template that I have that has all of this populated. So you can kind of see all that detail that I'm not going to go into now. But for now, here's the DX. I'm going to make that um, in the same colors. And you'll see what I also do is I usually have the preset, prefix F for my folder. So I can see our F folder, G group, um, so that all of that makes sense. And I usually have my group tracks at the bottom. So these are, are different tracks now. And I'll just route them to the appropriate group. Now obviously you do this for all the different tracks. And remember that shortcut I told you, if you've got multiple tracks selected, and you want them to go to the same place, you hold an Alt Shift and then you click on this menu to route them so that you don't have to do this one by one. I have to do it one by one because it's three different group outputs. So there is your, your basic audio there that's going to these different groups. Now, in terms of the, let me show you, in terms of the listening fold down, that's pretty simple because if you just go to stereo there, it's going to do the 5.1 to stereo fold down. And if you go to down mix preset there, you can open mix convert. And here you see that standard stereo fold down that we've discussed already. And you can tailor it. Now, as I said, check it with a standard because other systems might do it according to the standard. But you can refine it and tweak especially stuff like the surrounds, less or more depending on your project. If that makes your project better, Remember, this is just monitoring here yeah, in the control room. So then you'll have to make this change too with your actual export, which I'll show you how to do. Um, so you can change that if it makes things better, but always check what it will sound like automatically too, in case you don't have that control. So that's for my stereo fold down for listening. Now, if you want to export your stereo fold down, for starters, if you want to export your 5.1 project, including your stems, as I said you should do. Uh, I always set up a, 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 a shortcut for exporting, mine is Command-Alt-X. It's not set up on this brand new install. So I'm just going File, Export, Audio Mix Down. And here you see you've got the very nicely powerful export menu with lots of options. Now by default, you can see it's going to the top over here, Stereo Out. Have a look. If I go back to my audio connections, uh, it's hidden. Even though 5.1 is the main mix, because Stereo Out is the first on the list, that's the one that's ticked here. So check. I would actually su suggest setting those up the other way around, having your 5.1 first. But check that that's the one that you want to export. And if you set to single here, you can only tick one thing at a time. 
So that's your 5.1 output. Um, and these are all the other standard settings. This would probably be 24 bits. Uh, you don't want to do a mono down mix. You can split the channel. So we've discussed um, polywav or interleaved files versus separate mono. Sometimes it's safer to deliver separate mono so that the picture editor can match the correct channel to the correct output. And if you look at the um, naming standards here, choose one that includes the channel names like left or L, so that there's no confusion in terms of left being left, center being center, in case they have to do it in a different order for, say, cinema playback. Um, but that is, that is up to you and up to the circumstance where you want to export something like that. Then, um, if you want to do multiple exports, if you set multiple over here, then you can simultaneously export 5.1 and your various group tracks, which is very useful. Um, because then you can export your mix and you can export your 5.1 stems and it actually goes quite fast. It doesn't take the full time. These stem exports don't take the full time to export as it does with your mix, which is quite useful. But let's get back to ultimate, not ultimate, let's get back to alternative workflows where you can do more things simultaneously. For now, we're just going to do the 5.1 and your stems, or if it's even simpler, if it's a single export, it's just your 5.1 that you're going to export. Say you now want to export your stereo fold down. And this is the reason we created, one of the reasons, but this is a, a reason we created this submaster. If you didn't create it, you would first have to go patch each and every one of your stems to the stereo out. At the moment, they're all going to the submaster, it's going to 5.1 out. Now, you can just leave the stems as is, and you only have to change the submaster out and set that to stereo out now. And have a look at what happens at the mixer. Now it used to be a panner, and now it becomes this 5.1 to 2.0. Same plugin, mix convert, you double click there. And if you set it here, that's where you set it for your stereo fold down. And you can have a low pass filter, you can listen to stuff um, differently to also, well, you can do these same features over here in your control room, but this is where you set how it exports. So if you've made any tweaks to the stereo listening mode, do them here too if you want that to happen in the export. Um, some extra features here in terms of input output that lets you solo and mute stuff similar to the control room if you want to check what is going on. So that's very useful and very intuitive to use. Uh, and just for you to understand um, why this is simpler, if you didn't have stems at all or groups, each of your tracks would go to the output, the 5.1 out, and you would have to reroute each and every one to now go to the stereo output. If you've got stems, it's simpler. You just reroute each of your stems to the stereo output, and there you go. Now it's even simpler. You just reroute your submaster. Now there is a use case where you might want to leave this guy out because then if you route your three different stems directly to your stereo out, then you can independently set your mix convert for a more refined stereo version. So you might want to do that. But for pure simple sake, um, if you want to keep stuff standard, uh, which is a good idea if you work in a surround project and mix it for the sake of stereo, then this works quite nicely. Now that's the one thing you need to do. So you change this output. You also have to go to audio connections and make stereo your main mix. And now you can go back to export audio mix down. And now when you export your stereo out, it is going to work properly with stereo file with audio. We'll get back to other workflows that's more advanced that lets you automate this even more. But for now, this is quite a simple way for you to create your stereo tracks and control all of that. I hope this makes sense.